subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, lovely one. You cannot afford to stop watching Joy Learning where lessons are presented systematically, step by step, to deepen your understanding. Joy Learning, keep learning. Your own geography facilitator, Bogasam, presenting on food chain. And so, food chain is the topic. And before we look at the meaning of food chain, what are our objectives? What do I expect from you after the lesson presentation? Okay? So we go to our objectives. And objective number one, we have to define food word chain. That is, when I am done, you should be able to what? Define food chain. That is number one. Number two, you should be able to explain a sample food word chain as in you giving an example and then explaining it then also explain the energy flow within a terrestrial ecosystem checked this one too checked and this one checked okay good <laughs> then the fourth one define what we call trophic word level what is a trophic level what is it Good. Let's see whether we have more objectives. Oh, okay. Objective number five, you should be able to define decomposes. Or say decomposes. Okay? Then, also define what a food web is. Do we have more? Oh, right, good. Then, difference between food chain and what? Food web. We'll do that. Let's see whether we have more. Objective number eight, state the importance of what food chain. So we have eight objectives, I think. Eight objectives. Yes. So the objectives are what? Eight. And I'm sure by the time that we are done, you'll be able to do that. So food chain, what is a food chain? Now, a food chain describes the order in which organisms or living things depend on each other for food within an ecosystem. Okay? Talking of ecosystem, living and non-living things in a particular environment, the relationship that exists between them. And then the study of ecosystem is what? Ecology. I hope you have not forgotten in our previous presentation. Is that okay? So, talking of food here, we are talking of the order. This word is very, very important. The order in which organisms or living things depend on each other for food in their environment. So, as you are watching me now, how do you depend on someone? Or how do you depend on something in your environment for you to survive. Is that okay? Now, in other words, a food chain is the chronological order. Don't be afraid. Chronological is not that big word. As in the sequential order, in sequence. Sequent word, share. Is that okay? Step by step. The chronological order of who eats whom. <laughs> Don't get confused here. And let your attention be here. <laughs> Who eats what whom? In a biological word community. So in the environment that you find yourself, who eats whom? For survival. Okay? So the chronological order of who eats whom in a biological community. That is fantastic. Okay, good. So we move forward to keep explaining food chain by saying that it can also be defined as the feeding relationship between different organisms in a particular word, environment or habitat. The feed, I think I love this definition. The feeding word relationship between 
different organisms in a particular environment or habitat. The organisms are different, yet <laughs> they feed. And on what do they feed? That one we'll get to know. Okay? The feeding relationship that exists between different organisms in a particular word, environment. That is also what food chain. Now, it must be noted that every ecosystem or community of living things has one or more what food chains. Every ecosystem or community has one or more what food chains. It can just be one or it can be what? It can be more. Is that okay? Good. Now, by way of progressing, for an ecosystem to work, there should be a flow of energy within it. Energy must flow within that particular environment where one organism depends on the other to survive, where one organism eats the other to survive. And then it continues. So there should be a flow of what energy. Now, the organisms of the ecosystem need energy in the form of what food. The energy in the form of what food. And the ultimate source of energy within the ecosystem is the sun. The sun is the ultimate source of what? Energy within the ecosystem. So I believe for this one you know that a, a, a plants, okay, Plants trap this solar what energy or kind of light energy from the what from the sun and convert it into chemical what energy, which is what which is food. By the process known as what photosynthesis. Is that okay? So, yes, it is true. The sun is the ultimate source of energy. Without the sun, we cannot do so many things, we cannot survive. How would the plants manufacture their own food? Talk of the contumbre, talk of the cassava, talk of the cocoa, talk of the plantain, talk of the palm tree. Name them. Without the sun, how can all these do well for you and I to feed on them? Is that okay? So the sun is very, very important because it gives us solar word energy or another way say light word energy now most food chains start with organisms that make their own food so if organisms make their own food then your attention should be going to what plants <laughs> okay without consuming other life forms and these organisms are called what producers in one of the definitions we learn that in a community, who eats whom? It means at all costs, one eats the other, but it is not always like that. There is an instance whereby food is being what, obtained, but then where the food is obtained or the organism that obtains the food does not depend on others before obtaining its food. In other words, does not consume other forms of organisms before surviving, but rather produce its own word, food. And such organisms that produce their own food, we call them what? Producers. They just produce. So they don't care. They don't mind. Whether you come closer to them, of course, they will not feed on you. And so they produce their own word, food. So we call them what? Producers. Producers. Good. Now, the producers that are capab capable of producing their own food are called autotrophs compared to heterotrophs. It means heterotrophs are not capable of producing their own word, their own food. But autotrophs, auto, self, they produce their own word, food. Okay? 
Now, so on the explanation, typical examples are plants. I told you that let your attention go to what plants. Typical examples are plants which are primary producers. So for plants, all that they need is the sunlight, the solar energy. Then, by the process known as photosynthesis, these plants manufacture their own what? Food. Without going to consume another organism. Cause harm to that organism. No. The plant is of itself. The plant doesn't need your help. All that it needs is the sunlight. And then it produces the food. Now, so we are saying that this primary producer that manufactured their own food through the process called photosynthesis good. Algae, okay? Of course. By way of pronouncing it, according to the British, it is what? Algae. By the Americans, algae. Okay? So let's go by the algae. And this algae are also another example of what produces. And the algae are the plants that grow in uh, waters also uh, uh, on the surface of the, wa of the waters without having kind of, I mean, conspicuous stems, roots, or leaves. I believe you have seen those plants on water bodies before. We call them what? Agi. But if it is one, aga. Is that okay? Good. So it is also an example of the primary word produces. So, yes, so this is an example of the agi on your screen, on your screen. So, you don't see where their stems are, where the leaves are, where the roots are. Just on the surface of the, what, of the water body, okay? And some of them are kind of edible. They are being added to certain foods to add more what, nutrients. I'm not saying that when you see any leaves on a water body at all, uh, because I've said that they, they are, some are edible, it is just going to, no, 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 no. Make the inquiries and know those ones that are edible, okay? Or sort of added to our uh, food as a food supplement. Okay, so that's a sample picture of agar. Now, uh, consumers exist on the next level of the food chain. Consumers exist on the next level. Of, that is after the producers, after the plants have produced their food. The next level, in terms of the food chain, we have what? Consumers. Those who consume. Okay? Now, and one, we have three main types of consumers. We have what? Herbivores. This one, in fact, the H is what? Silent. We don't say herbivores, but what? Herbivores. Is that okay? Good. And there are those organisms that feed on plants like grasshopper. Grasshopper. Or say grasshoppers, they feed on what? Plants. So the grasshopper is described here as what? An herbivore. Okay. Good. Now, we also have carnivores. And there are those organisms that get their food by eating other carnivores or herbivores. Is that okay? Like rats. The rats. They eat other carnivores. Its own colleague or carnivores. Okay? <laughs> the rats can eat it. And can also feed on the herbivores, like the grasshopper. Okay? So then it tells you that as we go to the next type of consumers, you get to know that it means the rat, <laughs> is in quotes, can also be that, uh, uh, fall under that particular type of consumers. Is that okay? Good. So rat is an example, example of it. Now, we have omnivores. And these are those organisms that can digest both plants 
and animal tissues. Okay, so this same rats. The rats can feed on its co carnivores, can feed on herbivores, can feed on plants as well. So it can also fall under omnivores. Okay, now, so omnivores, once again, are those organisms that can digest both plants and animal wild tissues. It means they feed on both plants and feed on what? Animals as well. Both plants and animals. Examples, pigs. Okay. Chimpanzees. Chimpanzees. Okay. Mostly herbivores. So chimpanzees are mostly herbivores. But they also feed on carnivores as well. Okay, they are mostly herbivores, but also feed on carnivores. Then snake, okay, snake can also cl be classified under what? Omnivores. Okay, so having understood this, let's make progress. Let's make progress. Now, the energy flow within a terrestrial ecosystem. I believe uh, you know terrestrial ecosystem because we have that of the aquatic as well. So terrestrial, as in the ecosystem on land, or say land ecosystem, okay? Now, energy comes from the sun. We've established that fact already. Green plants trap the energy from the sun. Green plants use solar energy to manufacture food through the process of what? Photosynthesis. So what then is photosynthesis? Have we seen that even your sister and your brother... <laughs> At, at, at say KG2 is defining, or say they are defining photosynthesis. It is popular and it is common. You just meet, uh, uh, say, say, two or say three, I mean, students or people, I must say, will be able to define it for you. So, photosynthesis takes place in green plants using carbon dioxide, the process by which the plants manufacture their own word food with the help of the light or say solar word energy from the sun. Good. Now, still on the energy flow within the terrestrial ecosystem, green plants are consumed by primary consumers or herbivores like locusts and grasshoppers. In fact, the locusts too are a kind of what? Grasshoppers. Okay? Locusts and grasshoppers. They are classified as what primary what consumers or herbivores. Primary consumers are consumed by secondary what consumers. Is that okay? And secondary consumers are also consumed by so you see that chain step by step. So we have different trophic levels. Although we've not gotten to trophic levels, when we get there, you have a deeper understanding of it. So when you take the food chain at a step by step, that chronological order or sequential word order, the plant produces the food. We have a herbivore that feeds on the plant. Is that okay? Then we have a, 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 a carnivore that feeds on the herb herbivore. Is that okay? Then we also have the omnivore that feeds on both the uh, carnivores and then the, word, the herbivores and also the plants as well. So it can digest the tissues of both plants and what and animals. But of course, some of these animals can be uh, carnivores and at the same time what omnivores, as I gave the rats as an what example. Good. Now, tertiary consumers are consumed by decomposes oh when i hear when i get to this point then i become sad decomposes return the energy to the ecosystem why so one day one day when a human being also dies this the decomposes they will do justice to that human being they will help in the decaying of your body okay and then go and plant cassava there. Or say go and <laughs> sort of have a plant there. Plant some plants there. You see how the plant will blossom. It will grow. It will look greenish. All because 
the body has been decayed and it has added nutrient to the soil. So you see the cycle. Then this plant will trap the solar energy and with the nutrient in the soil do very well. Then someone will go and harvest it. So as soon as the composers return the energy to the one to the ecosystem. It is the last stage. And can also serve as what? At the, uh, at the beginning. But of course, the plants, which is the primary producers, or which are the primary producers, I must say, they trap the solar energy. But before the plants can do well, they need the nutrients. So taking it from the plants, the primary producers, herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, then this omnivores will die. Then the decomposers will cause the rotting of this omnivores, or say omnivores, and then add nutrients to the soil. Then the cycle what continues. So you see that the energy is flowing within the ecosystem. Then the ecosystem will continue to what to function. Is that okay? Good. So there should be that flow of what? Energy within the ecosystem. Now, let's go to what we call trophic levels. What is a trophic level? Well, so that with each transition of energy, the food chain moves up from one level to the other. With each transition of energy, plants produce the uh, plants that the herbivores need. So the grasshopper fed on that plant. The grasshopper is surviving because it has gotten some energy from the plants. It means we have a different level. Primary producer or producers, now we're on the herbivores level. Hmm. So can you see that? Then the carnivores will also feed on the, what, the herbivores. As in taking the rat, for instance, we also feed on a, on a grasshopper to survive. So there's a transition of energy. So it means that the rat too will be on a different level. Then the omnivores will also come feed on the rats to survive. Another level. So these different levels, step by step stages in the food chain for the energy to flow within the ecosystem, that is what we call the what? The, the, the levels is what we call the trophic level. Don't confuse yourself with the trophic levels with the food chain. The food chain is a sequential order. But the trophic level is the different levels at each stage within the what, the flow of energy in the echo word system. Now, these levels are called trophic levels, which indicate the position an organism occupies in the food chain. So in other words, a trophic level indicates or say identifies the position of an organism in the food chain. Is that okay? Or it tells one the position that an organism occupies in the food chain. That's the trophic level. So when you take the rat, which position does it occupy? When you take the pig, which position does it occupy? It is the trophic level that I will tell you. Now, the list of the order are primary producers. So number one, we have primary producers. So starting from the uh, 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 manufacturing of its own food, which is, of course, can be done by the, the plants. Number two, we have primary word consumers. Is that okay? The grasshopper will feed on the plants. Number three, we have secondary word consumers, which is synonymous with the word herbivores. Is that okay? Then we go to what? Tertiary word consumers, synonymous with what? Omnivores. Then we go to the quaternary, uh, quaternary consumers, hmm? the quaternary word consumers, and that is what the decomposes, decomposes. Is that okay? And that is the last stage. So from the primary producers, going up to the quaternary word consumers, quarter. So quaternary. So quaternary. Is that okay? Good. So still on the trophic level. Primary producers, we are seeing a, the one that gathers energy from an energy spot, such as the sun. An example may be what? Grass. So an example of a primary producer is what? Grass. Okay? How about primary consumer? 
the one that gets its energy directly from the primary producer. For this one, it doesn't go to the sun. As the grass traps the solar energy from the sun to make its own food, for the primary consumer, it doesn't go to the sun. <laughs> it goes to the what? To the primary producer. So the, the primary consumer, the one that gets its energy directly from the primary producer, such as grasshopper, which eats the grass. So the grasshopper is a primary what consumer. It doesn't get its energy from the sun, but rather gets it directly from the plant, like the grass. Then also, secondary consumers. That is the organisms that get their energy directly from the primary consumer. So you see the grasshopper. You see where you are. You're also in a tight corner. You have been feeding on the plant. Someone will also feed on you. So the secondary uh, 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 consumers are also feeding on the primary consumers, such as the rat which eats the grasshopper. Is that okay? Good. Let's see what also happens to the secondary consumers. Let's see. Okay. We also have the tertiary consumer. And the other organisms that get their energy directly from the secondary consumer, such as the snake, which eats the rat. <laughs> Grasshopper feeds on the plants. Okay? The rat also feeds on the grasshopper. Then the rat is not allowed to go scot free. The tertiary consumer also feeds on the rats. And the rat, human beings will also feed on rats. <laughs> Can you see that? We also feed on rats. And then, what again is that all? Let's continue and see. Okay, we have the quaternary consumer. Hmm? And these are typically carnivorous animals that eat tertiary word consumers. And what are they? Also known as apex predator. In other words, apex killer or alpha predator or Apical what? Predator. Is that okay? They are predators residing at the top of a food chain upon which no other creatures would prey. An example is a hawk that eats what? The snake. Is that okay? An example is the hawk. So this one, we are talking of the hawk. Okay? We are talking of the hawk. So the hawk eats the snake which is under the tertiary word consumers. So if human beings are also, uh, 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 if we are under the, uh, what they call the tertiary, does that mean that the hawk can also eat the human being? <laughs> that is a question that we need to, uh, to answer. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that the quaternary consumers, these are typically carnivorous animals that eat what tertiary word consumers okay now let's take this trophic levels we have the primary producer which is the grass okay then the grasshopper so the the, the grass is on the first trophic level is that okay then the grasshopper, which is the primary consumer, is on the second trophic one level. Okay? Then the frog. Here we are having the frog feeding on the grasshopper. This is also a good example. So the frog will be on the third trophic one level. And then the snake, who also feed on the frog, sort of extract the poison. Okay? So the snake will be on the fourth water traffic level. Then finally, the eagle. The eagle can also kill the snake and the what? And feed on it. So the eagle is on the fifth water traffic one level. Is that okay? Coming to the right side, we have the phytoplankton. Okay? Then the zooplankton. Small fish larger fish than the shark. So in the aquatic ecosystem, 
we see the shark to be on top, to be on the fifth trophic ward level. So trophic level, it is the position an organism occupies in the food chain. So when you ask, what is the trophic level of snake, taking into consideration these uh, are mere organisms in an ecosystem, you do your arrangement and you know that it is about the position of the snake in the food chain. And each link in the chain represents one trophic ward level. Is that okay? One time. Okay. We have another example of trophic level here. Here, the first trophic level, we have the plants, primary producers, as usual. Second trophic level, we have the primary consumers, which is also what a uh, herbivore. Is that okay? Herbivore. Good. So that is uh, uh, the grasshopper, okay? On the second trophic level. Then, secondary consumers. Also the same as what? We can, which can also serve as uh, carnivores or what? Omnivores. So the rat. The rat is a stubborn rat. <laughs> Have you seen that? Aha. Uh -huh. It's a carnivores or what? Omnivores. And then these uh, carnivores are what secondary what consumers. So the rats force under carnivores, and it also falls under what omnivores, meaning it can digest both plants and what animal what tissues. In other words, it can feed on both plants and what animals. So the rats will be on a third trophic what level. Then the tertiary, that is tertiary consumers, carnivores. Is that okay? On the fourth what trophic level. So per these organisms. The hawk will be on the uh, first word, fourth trophic word level. So it is not rigid, or say it is not automatic, but rather, if you are, uh, say, examine on this particular topic, depending on the organisms that have been given you, or depending on the arrangement, you should know which trophic level the, each of the organisms should word, occupy. Is that okay? Good. So. Ecologists refer to the trophic level or feeding level to describe the position of an organism along a food ward, along a food chain. I think it's that simple. Or it's well understood. Now, let's look at diagrammatic representation of food chain in the aquatic environment. Okay? We have this phytoplankton, this plant on the water body, okay? Then krill, which is shrimp-like, like a shrimp, okay? The krill feeds on the phytoward plankton. Is that okay? Then we have the emperor penguin. The penguin also feeds on a krill. And then we have the leopard seal or killer whale also feeding on the, word, the penguin. Is that okay? This exists in the aquatic eco system. Then... We can also have the other way around, where the phytoplankton is being fed on by the fish. Then penguin also feeds on the fish, and either of these, as in a killer whale or leopard seal, also feeds on the penguin. Moving to this side, we have the phytoplankton, the krill feeds on the phytoplankton, and the krill is also fed on by the squid. Okay, then the squid, penguin. So the penguin, hey, it feeds on so many things. The penguin feeds on the squid. And then <laughs> its masses are also what? There. Okay, the leopard seal and then the killer whale. They also feed on the what? On the emperor penguin. Is that okay? So this is how the food chain what? Works. You feed on me, I feed on you. Another person. I'll say another organism also what feeds on you. But the one who suffers most is the primary producer, as in the plant. The plant is harmless. The plant doesn't harm anybody, doesn't feed on anything to survive. All that it does is to what? To trap the solar energy from the sun. Then it manufactures its own food by the process known as photosynthesis. And look at the grasshopper feeding on the plants. Look at the rat. Feed on the uh, grasshopper. Uh, and then, then the snake will also come feed on the rat. Okay? And then we have 
the decompose uh, decomposers and all that. So that is how the chain wad works, step by step, on different traffic wad levels. Now, we have another one here. So, okay, this is a complete representation of it. Okay, do I have the uh, decomposers? No. So, I can't conclude that, in fact, it is really complete. So now we have the sun here. This is the sun, our ultimate source of what? Energy. And because the grass has been able to trap some solar energy from the sun, it is doing well. So it is blossoming, no? So the plant is ready. And then the grasshopper, the plant which is the producer is ready. Then the grasshopper, which is a primary consumer, it's also ready to feed on the plants. Mercy. <laughs> is that okay? Good. Then this grasshopper is also not allowed to go around scot-free. We have the shrew. Okay? The shrew here, which is a secondary consumer, also feeds on the grasshopper. hopper. Then we come to the owl. Okay? The owl is also a tertiary consumer which feeds on the, word, on the shrew. And so that is the chain. You feed on me. I feed on you, okay? So eventually, if the owl dies, then we'll have the decomposers, okay? That will cause the decay of the owl. And then the decay of it will also add some nutrient to the soil. And then the energy keeps flowing within the, word, the ecosystem. Is that okay? And once the nutrient is added to the soil, the grass will continue to do well. And then the grasshopper will continue to feed on it and the chain continues. Okay. All right. So that is a diagrammatic representation of food chain in the terrestrial uh, environment. Good. Now, sample food chain explain. So from the immediate diagram above, as in the diagram that we just looked at, the grass, which is the producer, prepares its food in the presence of sunlight. That is solar energy. Okay. The grasshopper, which is the primary consumer, it's the grass or the plant. The shrew, which is the secondary consumer, eats the grasshopper. And the owl, which is tertiary consumer, also eats the shrew. The owl then returns the energy into the ecosystem when it dies and what decomposes. So the owl returns the energy that it has taken from the shrew into the ecosystem when it dies and what decomposes. Is that okay? Then, so that is how come there should be an energy flow within the ecosystem for the ecosystem what, to work. So for the ecosystem to work, there should be an energy flow. Or there should be a flow of what? Energy all the time. Now, so on the uh, sample, once these organisms die, Another group of organisms called decomposers starts their functioning. As they feed on dead materials, they help in decomposing the dead bodies of plants and animals, on releasing the energy which is again absorbed by the soil to enrich its production of what plants. Thus, cycle what continues. In other words, the cycle and the, uh, the cycle of ecosystem what keeps taking place. It continues. Let's see whether we can have some images of these decomposers. Okay, we have some explanations. The decomposers are often the final link in a food chain. I told you. They are the final link in a food chain. Okay. Decomposers are bacteria and other organisms that cause decay. They are bacteria and other organisms that cause what decay, cause the dead plants and animals to what? To rot. When plants and animals die, okay, the composers break down their tissues. Break down their tissues. This is sad. This adds nutrients to the soil. Whilst one side is <laughs> going bad, another side is also going or, or doing well. This adds nutrients to the soil so that new plants may grow. Then the food chain begins what? Again. Then the, uh, the cycle what? Continues. Is that okay? 
Good. So, wow. These are some images of what decomposes. Is that okay? Yeah, so sample pictures of decomposers. So we have this uh, wood here, and as you see, like in the form of mushroom, and uh, these are the bacteria working or say acting on the wood or say the tree. And with time, the tree will become weak and die. And then it will add, it will mix up with the, with the soil. Go and plant something there. It will do well. Then here too, we have same here. Hmm? It decomposes. So let's assume that it's uh, someone who is dead and there. Let's say it's a cemetery. So no wonder when you go to a cemetery, you, you normally see some of these, I mean, decomposes. Is that okay? All right. Now, what is a food web? Because as part of our objectives, we said we should be able to define what a food web. Good. A food web is a group of food chains. So here, more than one food chain. If we have more than a food chain, then we are entering or so we have entered into a food web. So a food web is a group of food chains within an ecosystem. It's as simple as that. A group of what? Food chains within an ecosystem. Most living things eat more than one type of animal or plant. The emperor penguin. Okay? The penguin, I told you, feeds on the, on the uh, krill, feeds on the fish, feeds on the other animals as I showed you. Okay? So, such a type of uh, 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 organism, it does not feed on the, uh, only one. Okay? It feeds on more things. This one, they feed more than one type of animal or what plant. So, their food chains overlap and connect. Their food chains what overlap and what connect. So, most living things eat more than one type of animal or one type of plant. So, their food chains overlap and what and connect. For example, the hawk that ate the squirrel also may eat fish. Okay? The hawk that eats squirrel also eats what? Fish. This makes the hawk a part of two food chains. Do you hear that? So the emperor penguin. Okay? Or a food web. Is that okay? So the food web, more food chains. It's as simple as that. Right. So food chains, food chains go hand in hand with food webs. Though there are differences between the two. So now you know the difference between a food web and a food chain. Okay? While a food chain is a single pathway of energy transfer. Okay? While a food chain is a single pathway of energy transfer, a food web describes a group. A group of food chains within an echo word system a food web describes a group of food chains within an echo word system so a number of food chains give us a food web <laughs> is that okay good now let's look at some differences between food chain and food web so when we take food chain number one a food chain is the sequence of eating and being eaten among the living organisms to transfer energy. The sequence of what? Eating and being what? Eating among the living organisms to what? To transfer what? Energy. Now let's go to food web. A food web is a system of interconnected food chain. A system of what? Interconnected what? Food chain. The network of food chain develops a relationship between various organisms. So not just one single pathway, not just a single pathway by which energy is being transferred, but what? Different what? Pathways. Is that okay? Good. Let's see if we have more. Now, food chain, it is having four to five population of different species. Food chain has 
four to five population of what different what species. If we take the trophic levels into consideration, you could see that at certain level we had what four, certain level we had what five. Now, what how about food web? It is having numerous population of different what species. Numerous population of different species. Then the next one is that food chain. It is part of food web, sort of a subset of food web. That's simple. But how, so then how about food web? Food web contains many what food chains. Food web contains many food chains. Okay, let's see if we have more to talk about. Right. So now let's look at the importance of food. Do you think a food chain comes with some importance at all? Oh yes. So let's see. Number one. The chain, as in the food chain, means that all animals are linked together. It means that what? All animals are linked what? Together. It gives us that idea. It makes us understand that all animals are linked together. Because there's transfer of what? Energy. And so, the organisms keep what? Surviving. And the cycle what? Continues. If something affects one link, it affects the whole chain. So don't forget that along the line we said for a, an ecosystem to work, there should be a flow of what energy. So in other words, this flow, when it, the flow is cut off, it means the ecosystem will be affected. So organisms are linked to each other. So at a point where an organism fails to do its work, it means that the ecosystem will not work. So food chain is very, very important. Two. The food chain helps to keep all animals from becoming extinct. No food chain, no life. So for us to have lives, or for a life to exist, food chain must also work. So then the food chain is very, very what, important. Now, Importance number three, it keeps, as in the food chain, the food chain keeps animals alive and healthy by allowing them to eat things that give them nourishment. The food chain allows us to eat things that give us what nourishment. Then we become fine, we become okay, you grow well. So the grasshopper, when it feeds on the primary producer, which is the plant, the grasshopper becomes nice. <laughs> is that okay? And then other animals who also feed on this grasshopper for them to also look what nice. But eventually when they die, then the decomposers, I said the decomposers will do justice to them, will cause a decay of their bodies to add some nutrient to the soil. For the plants, that in one way or the other we are all dependent on to benefit. So you see where the plant is also benefiting from. As for the plant, it will not harm you, it is there. You will give it the nutrients and then it will uh, uh, produce for you to manufacture its own food for you. Then you keep feeding on it and then you'll be surviving. Point four, food chain helps in studying feeding relationships between organisms. Yes, as we've been learning, I kept hammering on some organisms that this one feeds on the other, this one does this, this one does that. It is the food chain that gives us that idea. Mm? It helps us to study feeding relationships between the organisms, food chain. So it is very, very important. Right. Five. Food chain also helps us to know how much energy, energy we gain by consuming with food. Okay? How much energy? This food chain. Okay? Six. Food chain helps us to know energy flow from one trophic level to another trophic word level. Energy flow from one trophic level to another trophic word level. As in the position that an organism occupies in the food chain. Is that okay? Do we have more? Oh. This brings us to the end of this particular lesson. And I know and I believe that because you have really understood it, you will never forget it. Once again, the name is Boga Sam. I'm done for now. 
until we meet some other time. Bye bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.